Sterling Heights, Michigan, a city that's either the best kept secret in Metro Detroit or has a few quirks you might want to know about before committing. Sterling Heights is known for its mix of suburban charm, affordable housing, and plentiful amenities, but let's be real. Every city has its fine print, whether it's the epic annual Sterling Fest where the funnel cakes flow like water or that traffic situation on Van Dyke Road, affectionately called any cuss word imaginable by the locals. There's a lot more to this place than you'd think. I'm going to dig into the fun, the unexpected, and the slightly offbeat truths that make Sterling Heights what it is. Let's get to it. For those of you just tuning into Sterling Heights, Michigan, we are talking about the 36.72 square mile city located in Macomb County that is home to right around 135,000 people. The city is smashed between the business hub of Troy, Warren, Utica, and Clinton Township. You might be thinking, oh yeah, I've heard of Sterling Heights before. It's that place where that 35 foot yellow ring is along M59 where over 100,000 vehicles travel this golden corridor daily. And I can assure you, you can't miss it. Anyway, Sterling Heights asked residents to officially name this golden ring and it's safe to say the jokes poured in more than traffic during rush hour. Get, get your mind out of the gutter, everybody. Outside of the Golden Ring, Sterling Heights is known for their events, parades, and festivals from coffee house concerts and Dodge Park Thursdays to recreational fun, Sterling Fest, like I mentioned, markets, frights, and Christmas shenanigans. The city does a good job of keeping the community evolved, which is a nice aspect considering Sterling Heights doesn't have a designated downtown space but as a lot of residents will say there's nearby downtowns that will scratch that itch for you as well as plentiful amenities along hall road too despite it not having that small town feel residents will also flock to dodge park where the sterling fest is held where there's a volleyball court soccer field walking trails that's where the farmers markets are and sterling heights amphitheater all while being conveniently located right next to the Clinton River to do some water activities too. It's an underrated area within Sterling Heights because it is more of that city and densely populated area, but there's this nice chunk of green space to cater to you outdoor folks out there. Outside of the parks and recreational offerings, events, parades, and festivals, there's actually a nice chunk of amenities too, as far as shopping and restaurants, especially along Hall Road, where you can have any type of cuisine within just a couple miles, and you have the ability to go to Sam's Club, Costco, Home Depot, Target, Kohl's, Marshalls and Home Goods, Meyer and Lowe's all right down that strip while having the Lakeside Mall. Although permanently closed, is taking on a $1 billion redevelopment project for a mixed use city center. You spend an afternoon in Sterling Heights and your wallet will be hurting, I promise you. On the other hand, Sterling Heights is what I've called a pass-through town in the past where a lot of people are simply passing through the area to get from point A to B with their destination. With M53 or Van Dyke Avenue cutting right through the center north and south, it can get pretty backed up and it can be the same on the northeastern side of the city on Hall Road. But I want to make sure I do a better job of talking about traffic to give you a, a better perspective because your opinion on traffic, being someone in let's say California, is different than my opinion here in Michigan. So I want to go more in depth, otherwise it sounds like all of the metro area is gridlocked day in and day out like LA and that is not the truth. So I'll throw a few scenarios at you during morning and evening rush hour on a Monday. So we have... Four people. One commutes to the Automation Alley in Troy. Another goes to the Renaissance Center in Detroit. Another to FCA in Auburn Hills. And the last person has an office job in Southfield. The Troy commuter leaves at 7.30 a.m. from Sterling Heights and gets there in about 10 to 20 minutes. The way home would be 15 to 25 minutes. Our Renaissance Center friend who commutes to Detroit will have a 35 to 45 minute commute to the office and 40 to 50 minute commute back from the office at around 5 o'clock. The Auburn Hills commuter to FCA will be 20 to 25 minutes to work and 25 to 40 minutes from work and again that's at 5 p.m. Last but not least, our Southfield friend has a 25 to 45 minute commute to work and around the same commute back, give or take a few minutes. And since I'm talking about commute, I wanted to feather in public transportation too. So 
Sterling Heights has transportation methods and that's the smart bus that has six or so routes that I will link in the description as well as the mini bus and my ride to service for people who are over the age of 55 and unable to drive and for residents with disabilities too. I wanted to switch gears a little bit to schools within Sterling Heights. We have Utica Community Schools as well as Warren Consolidated Schools. Utica Community Schools are ranked number one best school districts in Macomb County according to Niche.com, number 39 of 507 best places to teach in Michigan, number 40 of 517 districts with the best teachers in Michigan, and number 60 of 539 best school districts in Michigan. Utica Community Schools have earned an overall grade of an A-, which factors in academics, teachers, club and activities, sports, resources and facilities, diversity, college prep, administration, and food. The only thing keeping this grade from being better than an A- is the resources and facilities being at a C+. The school district does have programs, pathways for success, and athletic programs, but the facilities aren't as decked out as some of the other schools out there, and in this situation, you'd be getting better rated teachers for an athletics program that may not have all the bells and whistles. Warren Consolidated Schools, on the other hand, have earned an overall grade of a B- on each.com, factoring in all those same categories they listed off, and this report card is slacking in the areas of clubs and activities, as well as resources and facilities. Some other notable rankings about Warren Consolidated Schools is they are number 21 of 522 most diverse districts in Michigan, number 106 of 482 best school districts for athletes in Michigan, and 224 of 517 districts with the best teachers in Michigan. And I will be sure to link more information for both of these school districts in the description below. Since we are talking about schools, if you're someone that has been watching my videos week after week, you'd know it's, it's time to talk about property taxes. And as I mentioned time and time again, it's such a boring conversation to have, but they're incredibly important to shed light on in Michigan. And it can be the difference of you affording a home versus not. So with these two school districts comes two separate millage rates, the rate to calculate your property taxes. I will also be sure to link the thick PDF of the millage rates in the description so you can control F on your keyboard to see the rates in your areas of interest if you're curious. Utica Community Schools have a millage rate of 37.8338 and Warren Consolidated Schools have a millage rate of 42.5602. So a little bit of a jump from school district to school district. I also wanted to break down uh, a scenario of a yearly property tax estimate with these millage rates. But first, I wanted to bring up the graph provided by the Multiple Listing Service, which shows the entire MLS in blue and Sterling Heights in green. This is one of those few areas in Metro Detroit where the average sale price just rides right along the average in the state for the past three years, coming in at just over $313,000, which was an 8.1% increase over the course of 12 months. So when we circle this back to property taxes, for a higher estimate, we would take 50% of 313,000, just to keep the math easy, which would come out to $156,500. Multiply that by Utica's millage rate of 37.8338 that I mentioned earlier, and divide that total by 1,000, and you got an estimate annual property tax of $5,920.98 which again is a high estimate. I would rather have people overestimate than underestimate to where in a year or so when the taxes uncap on the property after the transfer, you get a notification of an escrow shortage that slaps you right in the face. So then to give you an estimate of Warren schools now, take that same $156,500 and multiply it by their millage rate of 42.5602 Total it up and divide it by 1,000 and we get $6,660.67, which is almost a $740 difference to pay every single year between school districts for being in the same exact city. So be sure to keep this in mind when you are buying a home in Sterling Heights or wherever in Michigan, honestly. So if we take a step back at a bird's eye view at Sterling Heights, Michigan, we can say that the amenities are plentiful there's a nice little dose of parks and recreation, despite it being pretty a pretty populated city. It's home to the number one school district in Macomb County. The home prices fall along the average for the state and aren't blown too far out of proportion, but they, of course, have increased over the years. There's a nice chunk of events, parades, festivals to bring the community together, despite not having a designated downtown to do so. On the other side of the tracks, we have 
the traffic and congestion that is complained about, but based on my commute scenarios, I mentioned earlier that might not be a huge deal breaker for you, especially depending on where you're coming from. So in terms of commuting and jobs, the area is also a manufacturing hub for FCA, Ford Motor Company, Mako Plastics, General Dynamics Land Systems, Key Safety Systems, U.S. Ferrothane Corporation, Millican Millwork, and BAE Systems, among a few others, and is home to the global corporate headquarters of Jets Pizza. Some say the area has heavy reliance on the automotive industry with limited employment sectors lacking diversity, and that can make things a little cyclical. But residents put praise on cleanliness of the city and safety, but are frustrated with the traffic and desire more unique retail and nightlife options, while noting it would be nice to have certain areas with more pedestrian access to. For those of you watching, is this a community you'd live in? Why or why not? And for those of you that live in the area or know of the area, what are your thoughts? Drop your comments below. If you're thinking about moving to Michigan in one day or a billion, feel free to reach out anytime. I also have a link to the Living in Michigan newsletter to give you insight on all things Michigan, so be sure to subscribe so you never miss out. Thanks for watching. Until next time.